By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a real Timmy duel for you because both of these decks are playing with Protocol Sorcerer. So obviously I'm playing with my Protocol Sorcerer deck called Timmy's Spellbook. And my opponent is playing with a Living Plains deck. And in that Living Plain deck he relies heavily on Timmy's. Now if you don't know what Living Plane is, what kind of card it is. It's an enchant world from Legends for two green and two to cast. And it reads, treat all land in play as both lands and 1-1 one -one creatures. They may not be tapped for mana the first turn they are brought into play. Why? They're creatures. They have summoning sickness. You can't use them. Anyway, it's, it's a really cool deck. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to show this to you. I have the deck photo and also I have a new deck photo of Timmy's Spellbook as well as this is also a deck, you know, as you know, that's constantly in the move. But before I start with the actual deck text, I just wanted to point out that you can also check the description below and there you can find a link. And if you click the link there, the timestamp, I should say, that will take you straight to the actual game. So if you want to skip the deck text and go and see the game, or maybe you want to see the games first and then look at the deck tech, you can do that by checking the timestamp below. As for here, we are going to continue by looking at the actual decks. And um, you know what? Let's just start with my deck. Uh, let's start with, um, with Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see the latest version of Timmy's Spellbook. Now, um, there's just something I'd like to point out before I really talk about the cards and the idea behind the deck is that besides this being... I think by now a pretty decent deck actually to play with like it's a good deck uh, besides that it also tells a story so when I started building this deck I just wanted to tell the story about the prodigal sorcerer about Timmy and if you know if you're familiar with the flavor text of Timmy it reads occasionally a member of the Institute of Arcane Study acquires a taste for worldly pleasures seldom do they have trouble finding employment right so he is a prodigal sorcerer so what basically happens in this deck is that he goes away from his studies and he decides to join the pirates hence the pirate ship in the deck so there is a story attached to it so i won't go into the story side of the deck for now i will just go into what the deck wants to do now what the deck wants to do basically is what blue does best which is control so you see four counter spells you see a mana drain to control the board you also see two control magics and three icy manipulators now the nice thing about that is i can steal a creature i can clone a creature i can tap a creature down with my icy i could eventually even kill it with a chaos orb if really need be right i can also ping it to death of course because i have four protocol sorcerers and a pirate ship and i can clone them so that can actually that can get quite brutal i can tell you from experience that can get quite brutal because people expect you to play maybe with one timmy for fun but not with a full play set so so sometimes people are like what you can just shoot my three three or four four out of the sky i'm like yeah well that's what this deck can do you know and and why is that so important i haven't even talked about the side blasts by the way or two side blasts in here also great for removal i think they're really made to kill sarah angels um but why I'm, why I'm pointing this out is that because I don't have to counter creature threats in general with this deck. Sometimes sometimes you have to, you know, you have to do what you have to do. But the idea behind it is I've got control magics, icy manipulators, psionic blasts, I've got the pingers. I don't really have to be afraid of creatures so I can focus my counter spells on other threats. For example, I'm playing against living plane today so I can use my counter spells to counter living plane. Now, obviously, I don't know this when I start playing this matchup. I don't know I'm playing against a living plane deck, but the idea of this deck is really um, to give myself space to use those five counter spells for the really, the really the important and essential cards in a deck. And usually those are not the creatures. Think about that. Think about that. Um, so let's look at the rest of the deck. We also see uh, there's quite some beef in this deck. I'm playing with Mahamoto Jin and with two air elementals. And remember, I can clone them if need be. And I, I just really like to do that, you know. Um, I think it's it's great to have some beef for the late game. If, I, if I'm able to control early game, mid game, and then late game, I can go over the top with Mahamoto Jin Air Elemental. I also play with two ghost ships. I'm actually quite impressed uh, with the ghost ships because they work so well against any disc tactic. You also see on my sideboard, I've got two discs and two more ghost ships. So I can actually do a little transformation with my deck 
where I'm also almost playing more like a blue disco deck, you know, with two extra ghost ships in there, with um, two Hercules recalls and with two Nevenerals discs in there. I'm kind of changing my deck completely. I can even add an extra copy artifact. So there, there are also different sides to this deck and different strategies. Um, talking about Nevenerals discs, you know, that's an artifact. As you can see, uh, a big part of this deck is artifacts. Artifacts are quite important in this brew. Uh, you see that top uh, line there starting with the Mach Sapphire. So we're counting a total of nine artifacts in that row, but also there are two copy artifacts. So we can say we've got 11 artifacts. Then we've got four Mishra's factories that can be turned into uh, assembly workers. So basically I'm playing with 15 artifacts and then you understand why I'm playing a Sage of Latinam main. I would actually like to play more Sage of Latinams if there is space, but that is the hard thing about brewing a deck, you know. You start with so many slots open and before you know it, you struggle to even find one spot for that fantastic Sage of Latinam. And of course I had to put Sage of Latinam in it because the Sage is the professor of uh, the Timmy at the Arcane Studies. So I cannot, you know, I cannot leave the Sage out, then the story wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, um, Sage of Latinam, really a fantastic card because it's card advantage. What you get is if you've got a Sage uh, on there, I'm not even that worried about losing an artifact because I know as soon as my opponent plays a Disenchant, Shed or whatever, tries to kill um, my Icy or maybe even tries to steal my Icy with Steel Artifact, which I think is a fantastic card and I wish I had space for Steel Artifact in this deck. Maybe I have to find space for it, but anyway, in response, I can just sack my artifact to the Sage and get a card for it. So that's pure card advantage. Sage of Latinam is pure gas. I'm really a big fan of the Sage of Latinam. Anyway, um, I can I can talk endlessly about Timmy's Spellbook and about the ideas of the cards and the stories behind them. I'm not gonna do that now. This is the deck I'm playing with today. I suggest that we, um, we take a look at the deck of my opponent. And um, yeah, let's take a look at the Living Plane deck of Avert. And here we see the deck of Avert, and I mean, it's just, it's first of all, it's a beautiful deck. It is a really beautiful deck. Um, and second, do you see the Keldon Warlord? How cool is that? He's playing with the Keldon Warlord. That's fantastic. But let's first focus on what this deck is all about, and that's of course about playing a living plane. Living plane, as I said before in the introduction of the, vi of the video, two green, two to cast, enchant world from legends, and it turns all the lands in play, all the lands, so not just the force, but all of them, into one one creatures. And that also means that when you put a land into play, that land now is summoning sickness. So you can, and this is an important part of this deck, you can't tap it for mana. Now, why is this important? Let's say, um, you know, I've got four or five lands and I'm playing against this living plane deck and my opponent is casting a living plane and already has, let's say two protocol sorcerers on the battlefield. He will cast living plane. All of a sudden, all the lands are turned into one ones and then he can turn his protocol sorcerer sideways to kill my lands. Now, the problem is, that let's say I've got five lands, he pings two, right? So I lose two lands. That means I've got three lands left to do anything because from that point forward, anytime I play a land, it has summoning sickness. I have to wait a whole turn, but it's not gonna survive a whole turn because my opponent pings it down with Timmy's. Now besides Timmy's, he also plays with a Falling Star, which I really hope to see in this matchup because that's gonna be that's gonna be hysterical. Now Falling Star is of course the card that you've got to uh, uh, flip from one feet just like the Chaos Orb, uh, and it's got to rotate, do a full rotation, just like the Chaos Orb. Um, the big difference is it does three damage to all the cards that it lands on, and you're allowed to kind of put your cards in a way, ideally you can hit six cards with one flip. I mean, but you, then you've got to be really like a pro with the Falling Star. I think an average, you're gonna hit, I, I guess, three cards, which is already pretty amazing. You know, deal three damage to three creatures with just one card. And can you imagine how good this card is in combination with Living Plane? All my lands are now one ones. He's gonna cast a Falling Star on my lands and potentially if he has the perfect flip, I lose six lands with one card. I mean, I mean that is insane. Oh, and um, we also see uh, see the card here from the red card from Legends. I keep forgetting the name, it's a common. You can deal four damage um, to, and you can divide that damage any way you want to. So um, you can deal one damage to a land each, killing four lands with one spell basically, which is also kind of insane. If we look at the rest of the deck, 
um, you know, we see uh, an ancestral recall, we see a wheel of fortune, we see uh, time twister. So those those are kind of enablers. They will get um, they will get a for the cards that he's looking for. We also see some ramp in this deck. You know, four birds of paradise just quickly ramp, and he's also playing with uh, four lightning bolts, which I think is going to be really good against me because. Um, Averd has to be very much afraid for my for Timmy's. As soon as he finds out that I'm playing with four protocol sorcerers, he's probably pretty worried. He wants to be the one that has a Timmy on the board, not his opponent. So he'll probably use um, use his direct damage first to try, to try to get rid of the Timmy's on my side of the board and then have the advantage. If he has a Timmy on the board that has no summoning sickness anymore, he's kind of in control of the protocol sorcerers, if you know what I mean. So that is going to be his main focus. And of course, Timmy is one of the only creatures that can actually kill itself. So if I try to take it over with a control magic, he can just kill kill, uh, kill himself and I have no creature. I mean, in that way, control magic is turned into a removal spell, so I don't really mind that. But I mean, it, it's just interesting to point that out. Um, he's got some artifact hate here in the form of crumbles. He's, of course, he's playing with Sylvan Library because he wants to find his combo pieces. Uh, we do see a lot of power in this deck, by the way. I already mentioned the Cecil Recall and the Time Twister, but I also see here when I look further down the bottom, a beautiful Black Lotus and a, a fantastic Time Walk here as well. I think overall when you look at this deck, besides it being a good deck, it's also just a beautiful deck to look at. I mean, look at that picture. Just, I, ca I can really enjoy decks like this. And I think it's just so cool to use power to make living plane work. I think I think that's really nice to see. Um, well, if it works, we're actually going to see that now in this matchup. Remember, uh, we both don't know what we're going to go up against. Um, I, think, I, think I, ha I think I have a chance here because you know, I've got my counter spell, so if I can counter the living plane, if I, if I can do that right, and I've, I've got my, my Timmy's, it's not going to be easy, but I think I stand a chance here. So let's go to the games and let's find out how this is going to end up. Game number one here, zero, zero. I believe I'm on the play sitting on the right side with the Timmy playmat, of course. And ooh, look at this opening, sweet, I like it. Mock Sapphire and actually not keeping two blue open to counter instead going for a Sage of Latinam. And there is a Birds of Paradise here by my opponent. Going to untap here, playing another island. Am I gonna play a Timmy already? No, also deciding not to attack. And there is a Library of Alexandria, Ay, this is not great. And there's a city in a bottle. Perfect answer here to this library of Alexandria. Of course, can he use? No, he can't use it because he cast the Birds of Paradise earlier. So, and there is a lightning bolt on my Sage of Latinum. As you can see, I'm doubting a little bit because I'm thinking, should I, should I sack my city in a bottle because it already took out the Loa, but I decide not to. Because possibly my opponent is going to play with City of Brasses, considering he's playing with multiple colors. So then the city in a bottle can be quite useful. And at this point, I don't know, of course, that my opponent is playing with the Living Plane. And here I'm casting an Icy Manipulator, followed up by a Maze of If. And that means I'm giving an opening here to my opponent. And he also has that Sylvan Library, of course. He knows I cannot counter because I'm tapped out. So he's thinking, am I going to take extra cards? Am I going to take damage? He's taking an extra card, he's going to 16. And remember, he if he casts a land now, he'll have five mana. Tapping two more. Oh, time walk. Wow, 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 wow. And this is kind of the risk um, when, you're, when you're a blue mage, and I'm sure people that have played with blue and old school know this feeling. When you, t when you tap out, you're kind of giving your your opponent an opening and you know that they're going to take the opening if they're good players and i think Avery is definitely one of those players that i qualify as a good player and um he took an extra turn here with the time we're just taking optimal advantage of this drawing another extra card going to 12 look at this double timmy now and uh, it's kind of teasing me here <laughs> about a, t a double timmy and wow I need to do something here. Okay, I'm gonna steal one of the Timmy's that will probably be killed next turn. He also has that Pendlehaven, by the way. So, I mean, it would make sense if he would ping my Timmy now to death. 
That is exactly what he does. So here again, you can see Control Magic just being used as a removal spell. And he's tapping four, and there's a living plane. There's a living plane. So this is really bad news for me. And what I notice now looking back is that I'm not using my IC on end step. I think that's uh, that's not a good decision here on my part, kind of forgetting to do that. Luckily, I have a psionic blast to take care of that Timmy, so at least I'm kind of safe for now. But remember, Avert's whole deck is kind of built around having a living plane in the game. So this is pretty nerve-wracking. At least I've got two blue open to possibly counter here. Only one card in hand, though. There's a regrowth on a protocol sorcerer. So... That is a new problem for me here. He's gonna, is he gonna cast it? Look at that, playing a lightning bolt. In response, I'm gonna tap something. And this is a very good decision here by Avert because in that way he's trying, he's finding out if I have a counter spell. I mean, I can counter the lightning bolt, then I'm tapped out and he can play the protocol sorcerer. And if I don't have it, I can just do what I'm doing now. And I cannot do anything against this casting of the protocol sorcerer. So very good play here by Avert. Man, and I'm just thinking, how how did this all of this happen? Because I felt I had a pretty good start in this matchup. There's another IC Manipulator, but that is not going to do it for me. I think he's now going to ping one of my lands. And things are looking grim for me here. And there's an Ice Storm taking care of another land. And he's attacking here with uh, three 1-1s. One and I'm letting it go, taking the damage, going to 16. Casting another land. Remember, the lands now have summoning sickness, and I think I'm giving up here. <laughs> and it's kind of when you're in this lock, it's really hard to get out of it because, I mean, what, what Avert can do with one protocol sorcerer already is every time on my, on my end step or, or in his turn, if he wants to, he can start killing my lands. And when I play a land, it has summoning sickness, so I can't use it. So I was just very low, but at least now I know what his deck wants to do. So I can try to board cards in accordingly. I could try to counter accordingly. So um, yeah, we're going to sideboard and then we'll catch back up with this game. Game number two. So losing that first one, it was it's just really brutal once uh, living plane and, and some kind of like a Timmy or some other way to kind of take care of your lands is, is on the board. And of course, that's exactly what Avert wants to do. At least now I know what his, what his game plan is. So let's see if I can play against it. This is my opener here. Two Timmy's Chaos Orb Counterspell. It's actually pretty good. A little bit light on Lance though. And it seems like Avert has taken a mulligan. And oh, look at that. He's only got one land. But he has some nice ramp with Birds of Paradise and Lanower Elves. So it is. this is going to be an interesting game here. There's a Tropical Island, and we'll probably see a Birds of Paradise here, passing turn. Remember, he also has that Lanawer, and there is a Chaos Orb here. Hopefully, I can find an island, because I only started with just two lands in my hand, and look at that, an Ice Storm. Wow, that can become pretty brutal, as we see the... Um, the image is very dodgy at the moment, so hopefully that will, that will change in a bit. We see a Lanawer Elf here. And okay, luckily, luckily it's back. We've got a good screen again. And we see a casting of Sylvan Library, but there's a counter spell from my side here. And there is an island. Tapping three. Well, we see a Timmy here. I had two Timmies in my opener. So there is a Timmy. And uh, it's actually Alter Timmy I got from Lady Death Touch. Uh, Lady Death Touch, if you're watching this, I am playing the Thomas the Sorcerer in my deck. <laughs> it's one of the four Timmies in Timmy Spellbook. And uh, let's see Avert here playing another land. He has five mana now. Tapping for three. Ooh, I like this. Very cool. Playing a time twister. So that means that, means that we're going to uh, draw seven fresh cards. That's pretty cool. I think it's I think time twister is um, I think it's the most interesting uh, piece of power. You know, it's 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 a power card that you kind of you need to think about it when you're using it. It's not like ancestral recall or, or recall or time walk that are just always good cards. You have to think about how you use time twister. And there is a volcanic island 
hitting the board. And will there be a time walk? Because that would be kind of ideal now. There is a lightning bolt on the Timmy. And look at that, I'm drawing into a Loa. Wow, that's just fantastic for me here. And just playing a new Timmy. Remember, that's still the, the Timmy, one of the Timmy's from my opener. And ooh, an ice storm taking care of that Library of Alexandria. Well done here by Avert. And oh, Ancestral Recall, wow, he's really finding those power cards here. And will that help him any further? Maybe another Lightning Bolt on the Timmy? I mean, he wants to get rid of it. Remember, he's got two Mana Dorks there that I can start pinging next turn. Tapping two here. And what are we going to see? Fireball for one. <laughs> he really doesn't like my Timmy's. He knows how, how, how important it is that I just don't have an active Timmy on the field. I mean, that ruins his entire game plan. And he's already killed two, so he's doing a pretty good job here. Oh, man. it looks I'm, I'm tapping and untapping lands here, not really doing anything else. I've got a full grip of cards. And I'm just passing turn here. Wow. Just doing nothing. Quite interesting. So I'm probably representing a counterspell here. You don't have to be a genius to, to understand that. And look at that Ancestral Recall in uh, on the end step of Avert here. And we're actually, we're, we're talking about this a little bit and uh, drawing three cards here. And let's see, what can I do? So again, a full grip of cards here, counting playing an island. I mean, I've got a lot of cards, but I don't, I, I need to find a way to take advantage of all these cards here. Playing a ghost ship, a 2-4 flyer from the dark, three blue to regenerate. Um, the thing is, oh, I'm actually taking it back. I'm playing a pirate ship instead. <laughs> and I'm deciding to discard the ghost ship. Okay. The difficult thing here, of course, is that I'm taking some risk here. Uh, risk number one is I cannot uh, counter. That's the biggest risk. Risk number two is I cannot activate the Chaos Orb at the moment because I'm tapped out. So, you know, there are actually a lot of risks. And there is a Lightning Bolt on the pirate ship. Ay, 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 that's bad news for me. And I think that's really a thing that I don't like about Pirate Ship. Why not just make it 3-4? You know, at least give it 4 toughness. It's a rare from Unlimited people. Come on. And I like this play here, the energy flux. That means I'm going to have to pay two for my orb, but maybe I'm going to use my... I'm actually not going to do that. Why is my... Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. I'm untapping it now. I was thinking, why is my Mishra's Factory untapped? I'm actually going to use it now. And I think, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I should have done that differently. Untapping in my upkeep, I should have used the Chaos Orb to flip on the Sylvan Library. But okay, this is what I've decided to do. I've got At least I've got two blue open to counter if my opponent plays, for example, a living plane. But we'll just have to see. And passing turn here. Playing another island and casting another ghost ship. Still having two blue open to counter if it's necessary. And at least Ghost Ship has 4 Toughness. So why does Ghost Ship have 4 Toughness and Pirate Ship have 3 Toughness? Let me know in the comments below. What's the theory behind this? Come on, Pirate Ship is a rare. People, Pirate Ship is a rare. Anyway, oh, look at this. Time Walk, probably have to counter this. There is a Mana Drain. But I'm thinking maybe Averd is doing this to lure out the counter spell. And now he's going to play a Living Plane. It's absolutely possible. And then he would still have 2 open. And that's actually not happening. So it's my turn. And there's the dice with the two mana. Because I have two lands open now. And there's an air elemental. 4-4 four, four air elemental. Attacking here with the ghost ship. First blood here. From my side. So Avert's going to drop to 18 here. And let's see. There is a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip it on my 4-4 Flyer? 
I'm actually countering it again. I think this is very risky, to be honest. I think I really need to keep my counter spells for those living planes. There is another bird. He can just use those birds as chum blockers, buy himself some time here. I mean, he's still an 18 as well. He doesn't have to chum block anything yet. And interesting here that I'm not attacking first, but I'm choosing to play out cards first. It looks like I'm changing my mind here. Tapping four, playing a clone. Cloning, I think, my air elemental here. Attacking for six. That means Averett's going to drop to 12 here. Very interesting. Remember, he has that Library of Alexandria, but I don't think he's going to use it. He's pretty light on cards, or is he just going to choose to to draw until he has seven? And okay, it looks like he's he's saying, you know what, you've got this one. Wow, interesting. He's not seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I think he could have lasted a couple of more turns simply chum blocking my air elementals here. But he's saying, you know what, you've got this one. And um, he's going to go to his sideboard again. And he's going to try to find the right composition to win game number three and then win the match. I'm pretty happy here because it means we're going to get a game number three. I find these matches quite interesting. So let's go to game number three. Game number three is about to begin here, and uh, I'm still pretty, a little bit surprised how that game two ended, because I think, uh, I think Averett could have stretched it a few more turns, but then again, he's a really good player, so I'm sure he knew that he couldn't win anymore. Um, anyway, it is Averett on the play here, yeah, Averett on the play, and look at that, he's taking a mulligan, so it means he's starting with six cards here, Tropical Island into a Birds of Paradise, pretty nice opener for him, but look at my opener here with a Library of Alexandria, ooh, there is an Ice Storm though, drawing a card here with the Loa, drawing another one, playing an island, that means I probably have to discard here, discarding a City in a Bottle, that probably means that I have my second City in a Bottle in hand, and a card number four here for Avert. And look at that. Oh, he's playing a wheel and I'm just going to lose my... <laughs> I'm going to lose. That's so stupid. going to lose my other city in the bottle. But, oh, wait a minute here. I'm got, I've got a red uh, elemental blast. Sorry, a blue elemental blast to counter the red wheel of fortune. Oh, but it looks like I didn't realize that I was showing my hand already and then I saw the blue elemental blast and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I can actually counter this Wheel of Fortune. So kind of a strange series of events here and there we see a strip mine on one of my blue sources and a Sylvan. And I think this is a very good play here from Avert because he knows if I strip your second blue source, you don't have two blue open to counter anymore and then I can play my Sylvan. So that's a very good move. At least now I've got two blue open. And um, first, Avert will have to choose what to pick from these cards. He can, of course, also decide to start filling his hand again. And he's taking an extra card, going to 16 here, playing Tropical Island, tapping his Loa for land here, it seems. And blue or red man? I'm not sure. Is there a time walk, perhaps, that he's going to cast here? And looks like he's a little bit confused. He's a little bit in the tank about what card he decided to pick with the Sylvan. Oh, look at this playing a regrowth, but actually that's not possible with the mana that he's tapped. Anyway, I'm countering it. I guess I'm not seeing it. Because obviously regrowth is one green and one, and he's not t tapping a green source. Um, and here I go playing the city in a bottle taking care of that Library of Alexandria. Of course, not a surprise here. And there we see Avery looking at his top three again. And oh, look at that, another time twister. We saw that in game two, we're seeing that here as well. Oh, that's so cool. What a swingy game. So first that Wheel of Fortune attempt and now the time twister. And this one is actually resolving. And it's always great to just to draw seven new cards. And there we go, drawing new ones. I've got one open. And there's a Taiga and pass turn here by Avert. 
And it's really nice to see these uh, dual lands next to each other on the side of Averett. And there is another basic island here on my side of the board. And there's a Sage of Latnam. And uh, by the way, you can see that my city in, uh, in a bottle is signed. And there's actually a story behind that. So it's, uh, it's signed by Dave Howell. And he did the tech support in the early days in 1994 of Wizards of the Coast of Watsi. Oh, look at that beautiful Black Lotus here by Avert slamming it on the board. That means he's got really got tons of mana this turn. What will he do? There is a Timmy first. I'm not doing anything against the Tim, it seems. Cracking for another Tim. Wow, two Tims on the board. And playing an Ancestral Recall and then taking my turn here. This is very risky because if he can play a living plane, it's pretty much end of game. So I have to make sure that I have something against that, playing a Chaos Orb here. That's something at least. Looking at my hand, do I have to discard here? That's of course an issue as well when you're playing blue. You want to keep some mana open to counter. Looks like I've got seven in hand though. Passing turn here. Ava looking at his hand. And I'm, I'm, I'm allowing him to keep the Sylvan. I'm not using my Chaos Orb to take care of the Sylvan. Because that's, of course, an option as well. And playing a Forest here. And what is he going to do? Having a lot of land again. Tapping two here. There is a Chaos Orb, orb of his own. Not countering it. So, I mean... I probably just don't have a counter spell here. Deciding to flip on a Timmy. And that is an interesting choice, actually. I'm not really understanding why I'm doing this. I'm also not understanding why I'm tapping my blue source, because it means I'm not keeping two blue open. And there's a living lance. And I think th I think this is costing me the game. I don't really understand why I'm doing I did what I did. In all honesty, maybe okay, I'm playing a team of my own, but that's not really going to help me. I I don't really understand why I did the Chaos Orb flip. I guess I did the flip in response of Avert casting his Chaos Orb, so I felt like now I can still use it at, le at least. But wow, 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 this game, um, this game is really slipping out of my hands fast. There's another Protocol Sorcerer. And uh, wow, what can I do here? At least casting an Air Elemental. Maybe I can just win it with Brute Force. But remember, he still has that Chaos Orb. It's probably going to use it now. Yeah, of course. On the Air Elemental. And oh, he's actually missing it. Okay, so at least there's a little bit of hope. Because he missed his flip. I mean, his things are still looking fantastic for Avert. I mean, it's not like it's bad, but I mean, he does have to deal with the 4 4 flyer now. But I mean, I think he'll be able to. First, gonna kill one of my lands. Oh, look at that control magic. This is even worse. Even worse. I just wish the flip would have hit. Oh my goodness. And he's got another Timmy untapped. He can even kill another land if he wants to. First he's going to attack me. Wants to attack me, but decides not to. Because actually Sage of Latinam is not a 1-1. One, one, it's a 1-2. A lot of people forget that. Look at that playing a Brain Geyser. And discarding a City in a Bottle? No, I'm actually discarding a Blue Elemental Blast. Interesting decision. Why not just discard the city in a bottle? Maybe I have another blue elemental blast in hand. Because my opponent is not really playing with any... With a lot of Arabian Nights in this deck. So I think this is a bad decision for my part. Anyway, Avert here attacking with his air elemental. Four damage for me now going to 15. And yeah, of course he's going to kill two more lands. I mean, this is looking very bad for me here. I kind of feel, when I look back at this game, I feel I could have done better, but I'm not sure how. 
Looking at my hand, tapping three blue, playing a psionic blast, taking care of one of the Timmies. I just, it kind of feels like I can do something back, but it's not enough, you know? I mean, Avid really has control here. He's probably gonna, yeah, gonna take care of another island here. So that means three lands left, gonna attack me with the air element, going to nine, gonna take back another Timmy with a regrowth. Oh man. Oh, things are looking really, really bad for me here. Uh, tapping, playing another team. Because the problem here is that I think this this game, um, I had a lot of Protocol Sorcerers in hand, but Avert was just always one step ahead with playing out the Timmies. And there we see Control Magic. Oh, man. Insult to injury. Insult to injury here, Avert. Oh, my God, man. I'm on nine. Oh, yeah, we're cheering here. There's Sarah's just that's all you can do in a moment like this is just uh, start drinking beer because this is going absolutely south for me. There's no way I can win this here. Uh, two two islands here. He's going to ping them down, playing another island. I'm putting that two to right, by the way, because those are the lands that with summoning sickness that I can't use straight away. Yeah, playing a city in a bottle. I mean, that's not really going to do anything on this board. And I mean, he's got three Timmies now. He can just kill all my islands. Look at that, killing all my islands here. And there's a force of nature. How cool is that? Oh man, he's gonna kill me with force of nature, man. And this is it, this is game. <laughs> that is really cool, wow. It's really nice to see um, a Living Plains deck like this in action and kind of like seeing it work and seeing it do what it's supposed to do. Um, I mean, in game three, I don't know what happened. I felt like I was, I was actually in it. Like I could, I could win the match. And that moment when Avert cast the Chaos Orb, and I decided in response to activate my Chaos Orb on uh, one of his Timmies, tapping a blue land for that, not keeping two blue open anymore. I don't think I have counter spell in hand, but still, when you're a blue mage, always keep two blue open because then at least you create the threat. I could have just tapped my factory, but anyway. Besides that, I felt from that point forward, I really lost the game. So I had that flip on his Timmy. He still had a Timmy left. He cast Living Plane. He found even more Timmies. I mean, I just lost it. I, I lost it there at that point. And then, of course, there was that moment where I had my Air Elemental. And he tried to flip on my Air Elemental. And he missed a flip. And that's when I thought, oh, wait a minute, he's missing the flip. I've got a 4-4 flyer. Maybe I can still win this one. And then there was the brutal control magic number one on my air elemental. And then the brutal control magic number two on the protocol sorcerer. So, I mean, Avert, well done. Great game. If you enjoy this content, um, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to Timmy Talks. If you're not subscribed yet, I would really appreciate that. And that all helps the channel grow. And talking about helping the channel, you can also become a sponsor of Timmy Talks, a sponsor of the show. And you can do that by becoming a patron on Patreon. There's probably a link popping up right now. You can click there and you can check out Timmy Talks on Patreon. Well, we actually do a lot of fun stuff. We've got a Discord, we've got tournaments. Uh, just check it out, have a look, see if it's something for you, and I would really appreciate it if you would consider becoming a sponsor of Timmy Talks. Talking about uh, sponsors and patrons, let's go to the end scroll, and let's take a look at all the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ich kann das Finger zu Samba gesehen.